Hi, this is a follow-up video on my BMC64 project. Um, if you're not familiar with BMC64, you can watch my other video about the project, um, but here's a quick summary. Um, in a nutshell, BMC64 is a fork of Vice made to run on the Raspberry Pi single board computers, models 2 and 3, uh, but without any uh, Linux operating system. It boots real quick, 4 seconds, nice smooth video because the video is synced with the display's vertical blanking interval lower audio latency, slightly lower video latency if you use real joysticks hooked up uh, through the GPIO pins, and there's no shutdown required, so unlike the Linux-based distros, you can just cut the power. Um, it's ideal for people who want to put Raspberry Pis inside Commodore 64 shells to try and recreate that original feel of the machine as much as possible. Um, I realized in my last video I never actually showed BMC64 running, and at the time I thought there was no real point since it would just be me running the demo or something, but uh, then I realized I should at least show the menu and point out some things that are unique to BMC64 that you might not find on other versions of Vice. So uh, this is the main menu. Um, you bring it up with F12, and if you're using a real Commodore keyboard with, say, a Kira, you can bring it up with uh, the Commodore key and F7. Um, first thing you notice is that uh, this is a custom UI. I made this UI from scratch myself. Um, I actually tried to make the uh, SDL UI work when I started this project, but I quickly realized it would be quite the effort. And uh, I had my own ideas anyway for how I wanted the menu to behave, so I ended up creating my own uh, UI framework to do this. Um, so you'll find you know, the usual options you would expect on, on any version of Vice. Uh, not all the options are there. Um, it's, it's kind of a limited set, it's the ones that uh, you, you might use most often. You can, of course, uh, attach disks to different drives. Um, you can attach cartridges, uh, tapes, etc., load snapshots. Um, and you know, you, you'll find that on, on just about any version out there. Um, but BMC64's video, uh, since version 2.2 anyway, is fully customizable. And that's what I wanted, or one of the things I wanted to show today. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was give people full control over how the video scales and is positioned so I spent some time in the last few weeks changing the way video was output um, in previous releases you had to manually edit the command line txt file on the SD card and set numbers to crop the video the way you wanted it um, and that was cumbersome and quite tedious with this release you have uh, some new video options um, to control how the video is, is how the video looks and you can change them uh, while they the system is running. So um, I can, for example, uh, change the uh, vertical centering. Uh, I can shift it up or down. Uh, and this is not as important on HDMI, but it's more important on a, um, on a CRT. So I, same thing, I can move it left and right. Uh, but more importantly, you can trim some of the border off. You can go from 0 to 100%, so you can actually take away all the border if you wanted to. Um, although that's uh, not recommended. Um, and then once you've decided how much border, like for example here, I might decide that, well, I think there's too much vertical border, so I'm just going to trim some off there, and that will change you know, the aspect ratio. Then you use the aspect ratio um, option here to stretch the video uh, how, you, how you want it. And this is, again, most, most important on a CRT. I think the defaults would work fine on uh, HDMI, but um, again, it's fully customizable. You'll notice that the um, the menu disappears uh, under you when you make these changes so you can actually see what you're doing. Same thing goes for uh, changing colors. You have your color palette here and you can change things like brightness and uh, contrast, gamma, tint, etc. So at the top you'll see um, that there is a message that tells you that your the, the timing of the machine. The machine in here is running as a PAL machine at 50 hertz. Um, now this is very important because it matters what the virtual machine thinks its frequency is and the actual frequency of the video mode the Pi is using. And that's because the machine is timed by the Pi's video vertical refresh frequency and not timed by sleeps like it would be on a desktop or other Linux port. So on a desktop machine, for example, it wouldn't matter that your video card is outputting at 60 hertz. You can still run a PALS 50 hertz machine, 
but with BMC 64 to get that smooth tear-free video you need the display to match the machine timing. Um, the default video mode um, is 720p at 50 Hz and that is set in the config.txt file and you can consult uh, Raspberry Pi documentation on how to change that mode. You may want to change it to a native, the native resolution of your TV or monitor, um, but the default should work fine for everybody. There is another important file called command.txt and let me just load up a snapshot here. So in this file you'll see something like this. It'll say fast equals true, which you can ignore, it just has to be there. Um, and you'll see a parameter called machine timing and it will be set to something like PAL HDMI or NTSC HDMI and there are other options that I'll explain uh, a little later. But it's very important that the machine timing parameter matches your real world video mode. But there's a catch. If you use composite out, you must change this to PAL composite. And that's because the refresh rate of the Pi's composite out is not exactly 50 Hertz even though the mode you choose in config txt says 50 Hertz it's more like 49.96 or something like that and that's just something strange about the way the Pi's composite mode uh, works but it's critical because that slight difference will give you audio synchronization issues so if you do end up um, connecting your Pi to uh, a CRT then this HDMI would just change to composite and your um, your timing would your audio would not get out of sync now you might remember that the 64 wasn't actually 50 Hertz it was actually 50.125 Hertz and what that means is uh, BMC 64 actually runs a tiny bit slower than the real thing if you were to run a real 64 beside BMC 64, they would actually get out of sync pretty quickly. But that small difference isn't really perceivable when you're playing games. Um, and I think it's worth it when you compare the quality of the video to, uh, to say, your desktop or other emulators on the Pi. So all of the above is true for NTSC as well, um, except you select a 60 hertz mode in config TXT and use either NTSC um, NTSC HDMI or um, NTSC composite. So you, it would look something like that. Um, and getting back to the menu, you'll notice that under the video menu, there is an option that says custom HDMI mode timing calc. And the reason that's there is because you can actually define your own custom HDMI modes with a Raspberry Pi. Um, and f for example, let me just go back to um, another snapshot here. So in config txt, this is just an example, and it's not complete. Because it's just um, just to let you know that you can do this. The the uh, the full definition of this mode is actually on the project's uh, GitHub site, so you can look at that. This is uh, what you would put in config txt to set a mode that would match 50.125 Hertz. Um, so you disable over scan is pretty standard. HDMI timings, you have this big string, uh, string of numbers and then HDMI group and that HDMI mode equals 87 is what tells it to use that HDMI timings, the custom timings. Um, and then you'll match the cycles per second, um, you know, almost exactly of the original machine. Um, but you have to tell the machine in command line TXT uh, what the, the cycle, the new cycles per second is. And again, if you go back to the uh, command line TXT, in addition to the machine timing parameter, you would add cycles um, per second equals, and in this case, the number would be 985. Two five seven, and that's what this menu option would do for you. So the idea here is you would go in here after setting your config txt to whatever uh, resolution and timing you would want, roughly around the fifty hertz or fifty point one two five hertz uh, uh, range, and you would come in here. It just describes what you're doing. Start the calculation, and this takes about ten minutes. And what it's doing is precisely calculating. Um, how many cycles per second uh, you need to make sure that your audio uh, 
stays in sync with that mode. And it'll tell you at the end of this, I'm not going to let this finish, but it'll tell you at the end exactly what cycles per second you should put into the, um, into the command line TXT file. Now, of course, if you don't care about the small difference between 50 and 50.125, then you can just leave, leave the defaults as is and you'll be fine. Um, the reason I didn't go with the 50.125 uh, hertz mode is because I suspect it's not supported by every monitor since it's not a standard resolution. So I go with the safe 720p mode that I know uh, will work on just about every monitor. Um, another feature that's kind of neat uh, in BMC64 is uh, you can get these quick pop-ups. Um, so there are custom actions you can assign to uh, different keystrokes. So I mentioned Commodore or Control on a real keyboard uh, plus F7 um, would, brings up the menu. So that's actually configurable here. So for example, I have um, the ability to set Commodore F1 to uh, tape on-screen display. And if I go back in the emulator, um, when I hit Control F1 or Commodore F1, then I get the pop-up and it's, it doesn't uh, halt emulation, so I can just quickly control the tape here. Um, and the idea is you either do that through keys or USB button mappings. And there are a number of other options. You can have, there's a cartridge OSD. So again, you might be in the middle of a game, you bring this up and you can save uh, or cartridge freeze at that point. Um, there are other options that um, you can, like you can reset, uh, soft reset, um, warp, for example. So I, I mentioned before that USB buttons on uh, game pads are also configurable in a, in a similar way. Let me just go to the um, USB Joy 1 configuration. And uh, just like the key uh, mappings, you can assign different actions to uh, your gamepad buttons. Of course, there's fire, but you can also bring up the menu. You can warp, uh, change the status, toggle. There's a status bar that shows up at the bottom. Um, of the display. You can swap your joystick ports without going into the menu. Uh, you got your directions. Um, again, there's the uh, tape and cartridge on-screen display, you, or you can just reset um, using a, a, a button uh, with a confirmation. And uh, uh, there are also uh, custom key keyboard mappings you can define there as well. Um, so that's it for my video today. Uh, stay tuned for another video on some great news for Commodore 128 fans.